share your life in a way that you're not fractured by the things of life to the point where you can't be happy. There's so many people, their happiness is basically something that's fleeting. One day they might be happy, the next day they're not. They go through mood changes, mood swings to the point that their life is run by their emotions. But rejoicing is a, is a choice. And it doesn't say rejoice in yourself. It says to rejoice in the Lord. And it doesn't say to rejoice in the Lord one time. It says to rejoice in the Lord always. Always. This is a positive mindset. I remember listening years ago. There's a a preacher named E.V. Hill. And he was one of the best preachers I've ever listened to. He was a he was a black American preacher. And he had this voice. When you heard him, you knew it was his voice. And I remember he was preaching on this verse. And he was talking about at a graduation at a college. And he was talking to students who are going to be going into the ministry. They were graduating. They were going to be going into the ministry. And he said, I couldn't do it like he did, but he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He said, when you're, when God calls you to go somewhere to minister another country, whatever, and you don't know how he's going to supply your needs. You don't know what he's going to do or how he's going to do it. Rejoice in the Lord always. And he gave all these things and he was talking about, you know, um, how hard it is sometimes when you're just starting out and you're trying to find a way to pay your bills. You're trying to find a way to, you know, make ends meet. And he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And, and I was thinking about the um, singer, um, the gospel Christian singer, Billy um, Sprague, who was engaged to be married. Imagine this. He was engaged to be married. And he was supposed to meet his fiance at, at a concert that he was doing that night and on his way to the concert a car struck her car and she was killed so he gets there and he finds out that his fiance love of his life was instantly taken just like that boom car accident And it devastated him as it would anybody. It devastated him. Devastated him. And for weeks and months, he mourned and suffered the loss. And later on, he wrote a song called, It Took Faith Just to Tie My Shoes. Just to get up. And tie my shoes just to get up and start to walk and do things again and 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 try to get my life in a in a fact and he said the thing that got him through was he kept reading that verse rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice it's not easy to rejoice in the lord when everything in your life is going through a test or a trial amen it's not easy to trust the Lord then. It's not easy to trust God when, you know, you're, you're suffering. But a rejoicing mind is a mind that is on the Lord. It's a mindset. 
The next thing he says here is don't be anxious. Rejoice in the Lord always. And, and then in the fourth verse, in the fifth verse, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious. Anxiety. They say now there are more sleep disorders. Psychologists are treating than ever before. People can't sleep at night. They lay down, their mind just goes and goes and goes. People are worried about everything, and it all comes into you into your mind at night. Our dreams, anxious dreams. Don't be anxious. Rejoice in the Lord. Don't be anxious, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. There's the key to life. What's the key to life? Make yourself and your request known to God. Amen? Somebody say amen. Make yourself and your request known to God. Pray about everything. You say, well, God's not concerned about that test I got tomorrow at school. God's not concerned about that performance report at work. God's not concerned about that relationship. God is concerned. And he says there isn't a sparrow that falls from a tree that he doesn't notice. And Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's worries will take care of themselves. We got enough to worry about. To just consider today. I didn't know that. I just, <laughs> the Holy Spirit knew. Amen. Don't worry about it. Don't have anxiety. Now, that's easy to say. That's easy to say. Oh, don't have anxiety. Okay, sure, I won't. And you're thinking, of, oh, I'm going to think about that all night. I'm going to worry about that all next week. Don't worry about it. Wow, you mean you mean you mean I don't have to worry about that? You mean really seriously? You're telling me I don't. But what if, if I don't worry about it? It won't get done if I don't worry about it. How how is it going to happen? Because God didn't say you're not going to do it. He didn't say you're not going to perform it. He just said don't worry about it. Don't be anxious about it. But if you pray about it, what happens? The peace of God. Next verse. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. It surpasses your understanding. It surpasses your comprehension. See, what God is saying is, it's not about your reasoning tonight. It's not about your understanding of things. What he's saying is, when you're committing that to him, then what is he going to do? He's going to make sure that whatever it is that you put your hand to, it's going to be blessed. That whatever you do in your life, it's going to be blessed. Why? Because you're putting God first. Because you're acknowledging the Lord in all your ways. And he's going to direct your steps. That's positive thinking. That's the only positive thinking tonight that I'm ever going to preach. It's a positive thinking that gets us to the throne of God in our lives that gets us in prayer because that's the only positive thing that we say when your heart is in God's hands the devil can't take your mind and do with it as he wants when your mind is in God's hands Satan's schemes will fail here's some things that God tells us about our, our thinking Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are true. We talked about truth last last week, about the belt of truth and having truth on as a belt around our minds, tightening the truth. You see, everything the devil says is a lie. Jesus said he's the father of lies. That's what he does. He's been doing it since the Garden of Eden. He's a liar. 
He's a manipulator. He's a master con man. And the devil will use lies to try to deceive your mind, to try to get you out of that mindset of peace. Because believe it or not, God wants us to have a peaceful mind. And there's so many, there's so many teachings that are false on peace. You know, every religion has a mantra, a peace mantra, or some way of getting peace, you know, through meditation or one of these other things. But God doesn't say all that. What he says is, come to me. Give me your anxiety. Give me your fear, your worries. Give them to me. I'll take them. And then in return, I'll give you my peace. It's the peace of God that we need tonight. The peace of God. But think on that which is true. Noble. Things that are just. Whatever things are pure. Whatever things are lovely. Whatever things are of a good report. If there's any virtue. If there's anything praiseworthy. Meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me. These do, and the God of peace will be with you. These are all awesome things, and each one of them deserves its own time to be studied. But let's just take a look at them. Excellency and praiseworthy. Winning. Being of a winning attitude and a winning heart. Doesn't require you to be rich. Doesn't require you to be super intelligent. You don't have to be an, an elite person to be successful and be a winner. It just simply means to be a humble servant of God. It simply means to be a person that prays and that you're giving your life to the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. There are many people that are rich. There's many people that, that are uh, considered intelligent thinkers. Many people that are, uh, you know, inherently rich or whatever. But they don't have peace. But winning means something totally different in the kingdom of God than it means in the world. The world will do anything to win. They'll cheat. They'll lie. Let's look at politics. <laughs> they'll cheat. They'll lie. They'll tell you anything they want to get your vote. And then once, once they're elected, boom, they just do whatever they want. And we all know that. The world will, it's a, you ever heard the saying, it's a dog eat dog world. That means that, you know, to get ahead, people think they have to do all of these things. You know, they got to cheat. They got to do all these things. But my goodness, there's a difference between success and, and winning in God's word and in how the world sees it. But I do like sports. I was in sports my whole life. I played sport. I told you before, I played all three sports through school, football, basketball, baseball. I, I, you don't have to love sports, but there are many good analogies in sports, re, whether you like them or not, that we could use. One of my um, favorite guys is uh, Vince Lombardi. He was the coach of the Green Bay Packers during their heyday when they were good. Well, they're still good, but when they were winning championships all the time. And he was... He was a great one to believe in winning and what winning was. And, and he had many good quotes. Winning is a choice. And we can be what God wants us to, what God wants us to be. All things are possible to them that believe. Faith in God. That's the number one thing. If you want to win, <coughs> I 
<coughs> amen, then you need to believe in trusting God, in God's way of winning. But see, God's way is different, as I said, than the world. Look at John's gospel, chapter 12, real quick. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am there, my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Now, when he says hate, he doesn't mean he wants you to hate yourself. Well, what, is, what is Jesus saying there? He's saying that if we really want to know what winning is, then we need to deny ourselves and acknowledge him with all of our heart. And by giving ourselves to him, we win. Because what do we win? We win eternal life. Amen. We win eternity. See, we're so conditioned to think about things in a temporal world sense that we totally miss the eternal things. We're so consumed with what we eat, what we drink, what we wear, what we do, our job, our school, all of these temporal things. And when we look at the world, if we're if we're all we're out for is what we can get. And even if we're Christians and, and we're wanting to do good and, and please God, we have to be careful that we don't allow money and wealth and the pursuit of happiness. Which is all fine and good as long as whatever we're pursuing doesn't become our main pursuit. In other words, if we don't put Christ first in our life, if we don't put Jesus, number one, no matter what we're pursuing, it's not going to add up. And he says that if we're if we're not putting him first and, and we're not giving him our life, then we're not really winning. We're going to lose. And little by little, we'll lose even what we have. You know, it's like the parable of the talents. The man took what God gave him and he buried his talents. He never used them. He never did anything with them. And when the master came back and was wanting to give an account for everything that the man had done, he hadn't done anything with what God had given him. He hadn't done anything. He hadn't taken that seriously and he lost. So this person, I don't know, is this person on, hold on, let me see what's going on here. I can't see that. All right. If that person says something again, uh, just give them a warning and then that's it. Because I don't know what's going on with that person. I, I mean, I didn't say, you know, hey, listen, maybe you should not be interrupting the service but if you see somebody doing that give them that warning for me and then that's it one morning and boom they're gone because you know obviously you know this is important what we're doing here all right so back to this this is what vince lombardi said about winning real quick winning isn't everything but the will to win is everything. Winning is a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing. That's good. Winning is not a sometime thing. You don't win once in a while. You don't do things right once in a while. You do things right all the time. Winning is a habit. And so is losing. So think about this. And I'm going to close and, and give you a scripture that if there's one scripture that I've tried to abide by my whole life and 
probably failed miserably. But it's Colossians 3, 23. And, the, and it's a good one to mark, highlight, whatever, because it really does mean a lot. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. So a life scripture. Do, do it as under the Lord. If you're a student, then take your studies to the next level. Do excellent by looking at your studying as under the Lord. If you're in a job, even if you don't like your job, a lot of people hate their job. <clears throat> but one thing that I did all through my life when I had a job I didn't like is I remembered I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for the Lord. I'm doing this job as under the Lord. And when I do it under the Lord with all of my heart, guess what? I'm going to be blessed. Now, I can give you examples, and I'm not going to, you know, take the time to do that tonight, but there are many. Okay, so when you're, when you're thinking about winning tonight, when you're thinking about your attitude, are you doing everything as under the Lord? You say, well, I got a teacher that really just irritates me she doesn't help us she's not good she's rude whatever and that makes you not want to do good in that class it makes you want to just blow it off because hey the teacher's not going to help me i'm not going to get rewarded for what i'm doing why should i even try well because you're not doing it under that teacher are you you're doing it as under the lord and when you do things under the lord it changes your attitude about it would you give God a half effort? Would you give God only a partial effort? No. You would want to give the Lord every good effort that you have. Why? Because you love the Lord and because you want to be blessed in your life. Our attitude will determine how far we will go in our life. There's a discipline that we have to be willing to put in to whatever we do. Some people want the results without the effort. <clears throat> Talk to Olympic, Olympic athletes that spend hours a day training for that one shining moment where they get to highlight their skills before the world you know and you think about the discipline i was reading about a violin maker whose violins were considered the best in the world other violin makers were jealous because theirs didn't sound as good and when they determined why his violins were so good they realized they went out into the woods closest to their home without any difficulty, cut down the trees, built the, built the violins, and that was it. But this man went way out into the deepest parts of the woods in wind-torn areas where these trees that he would get the wood from were knotted from winds and storms, and he would climb way up, and he would get these the wood from these trees. It was the hardest wood. It was the best wood in the world. But it caused him a great difficulty. He had to climb higher and more. Amen. But once he got that wood and he would bring it back and he would make these violins and they had the greatest sound. And you see, that was the key. 
The key was that he went the extra mile. He took the time to go the extra mile. The discipline that he put in. Nobody was watching. He didn't have to do that. Somebody said character isn't what you do in a group. But it's what you do when nobody's watching. Your character will determine your integrity. Maybe somebody else doesn't matter to them. They're willing to cheat. They're willing to do things, but not you. You want excellence. You want greatness. You want to go to the next level in your life. You want to be something beyond what other people are. And there is that for you, but you have to be willing to set aside the discipline and the time and do it. You know, people want results that they don't pay for. They want to achieve things that others achieve without paying the price that others pay. You see what I'm saying? And so as as a Christian, winning is everything Because as a winner, that simply means that you have determined to live your life as unto the Lord. That's it. That's as simple as that. When you say, God, I'm living my life unto you. I'm living as if you're looking down from heaven and you're watching my life and you're wanting me to be special in you. You're wanting me to do great things. And God says, you can do great things. When you, when you do it as unto me. And that's our life. And I've tried to live that. It's not always easy. God will put people in your life to challenge you. I tell many stories in my life. And, I, and I'm not going to share them tonight. But I've shared them before. Many stories where God has put people in my life. And I didn't understand it at the time. But he was working something in me. There's people that I, I wanted to fight, you know, I, I wanted to beat up because I just, oh my goodness, they pushed every button I had. And I didn't understand it at the time. I was immature. I was, I didn't know. I didn't understand. And then later on, God shows me. No, I didn't beat anybody up. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I'm just being honest that, hey, you know. The flesh, the human side of us sometimes gets challenged. No, but in every t- every instance, God showed me that this person was pushing my buttons for a reason because I needed God to change something in my life. There was something in me that I wasn't seeing clearly. And so he had to change me. So we're we're talking about developing a winning attitude tonight. And I'm going to close. I want you to look at your life like you've never looked at it before. And maybe you're a young Christian. Maybe you're just coming to the Lord. I don't know. But look at your life. As if it was before the Lord. I love that. Unto the Lord. There's something about that. That sets us free. Because God doesn't judge us like people judge us. People are harsh. People are mean. But God doesn't judge us like that. God sees in us the treasure we don't even see. God sees in us things about us that we don't even see. And, and there's there's things about our life that we can't even imagine because we've been told things that maybe are negative our whole life. that You're never going to amount to anything, you know, uh, or you're stupid, you're dumb, you're not good enough. Whatever it is that we've heard from people, maybe family members, maybe people in our life haven't been encouragement to us. But God doesn't see us that way. So when you're doing it under the Lord, you're doing it under the one that, first of all, created you. He created you to be great. Like the old saying, God doesn't make junk. 
He made you. He made me. He didn't make us to be junk. He didn't make us to be throwaways, people that are discarded. He didn't make us to be. He didn't make us to be losers. He made us to be winners. But winning is an attitude. It's just like anything else. Somebody, you know, homeless on a street gets three meals a day. Maybe doesn't have a ability to work or, or, or you know, is a veteran or something and, and, and has very little to show for it. But their mental, their mind is under the Lord and they're able to quote scripture. They're able to share things. Amen. Many of the preachers that started churches, that started colleges, that started Francis Asbury. There's a statue erected to him in Kentucky. A horse, he rode on horseback all over the United States before there were roads. Back when George Washington was president, he, he, he rode on horseback through the woods, reached all kinds of settlers and Indians for the Lord. Hundreds and thousands of people accepted Christ. And many times he wrote in his diary that he would go to a church and he would have no food for days, only water. He would go days without food. And he wrote how every time that he would get to a point where he thought he couldn't go on, somebody would come and give him food. Somebody would come and rescue him. He was a winner. He was a winner. When he was too old to ride his horse because his body was riddled with arthritis, he would they would find him trying to get up on his horse to ride another day for Christ. They had to literally pull him down off of the horse because he couldn't ride anymore. He didn't need to ride. He was, at that time, he'd established Asbury Theological Seminary. He'd had all kinds of, you know, preachers under him. They, they say he raised up more preachers than any other preacher in America. I'm saying this because I wanted you to understand what winning is. Winning means, number one, and, and, and lastly, number one and last. Winning is following Jesus every day of your life with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Hey, Abdul, welcome. If you do that, if you follow Christ every day and say, I'm giving every day to you, Jesus, whatever it is you want me to do, that's winning. That is winning. That's success. And God will keep you all your days. Amen. Amen. Jonathan Edwards in 1700s, New England. When everything in, in New England, you talk about worldliness, you talk about, you know, you know, politics. The politics were that they were, they were telling churches that no longer accept memberships, that anybody could be a member of the kingdom of God. It didn't matter if they were saved or not. It didn't matter if they were born again or had Jesus. They called it a halfway covenant. And Jonathan Edwards was blind in one eye. He couldn't see. But out of one eye. Good night. He can always see. You only see out of one eye. And with a light and a candle, he'd read his Bible for hours a day. He was a winner. When all hell is against you, you can win. And he wrote the, one of the greatest literary works of all time. It's probably one of the greatest works up, up near the Bible in its importance called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And that day he preached the message in a visiting church in New England. 
and it was so powerful that people thought they were actually going to be swept into hell before they could reach the altar. They were running to the altar to be saved. He said in his sermon, you are like a worm strung over a spider web over the flames of hell. And the only thing holding you up from falling into hell is the grace of God. That was his sermon. And it started a revival in New England and New York and even reached London across the pond in Ireland and the world. Because he was a winner. He had an attitude that said, you know what? It may have reached Delhi. <laughs> it may have. I know there's been other revivals that have. Praise God. So no, you might have things in your life that aren't perfect. You might have obstacles, challenges. But don't let anything ever stop you. From going all out for Jesus and doing what he wants you to do. Amen. Well, I'm glad you're a Christian now, Abdul. That is awesome. Praise God. I have a pastor friend in India. His name is Victor. And we haven't seen Victor in a while, but he's a part of our group. But he hasn't been on in a while, and I hope he's okay because he's in a a very difficult area where there's a lot of COVID-19 going on and a lot of things. So we should pray for Victor when we remember. Um, anyway, let's pray tonight. Let's close. If anybody here, you know, you're saying tonight after hearing this message, yes, I want that attitude of, a, of to be a victorious person. And you'd say, I want Jesus to make me victorious. Maybe you got things in your life that have caused you to stumble. Maybe you've had things in your life that you've not been able to overcome. I want you tonight to say, I'm going to give this to Jesus. I want to be unto the Lord. I want my life to be unto the Lord. And like I said, God doesn't look at you like people. God doesn't judge you like people. God sees in us what we don't see in ourselves. I never saw in myself I would be a preacher one day. I never saw that. God saw that for me. I accepted the call, but it was God that called me. It was God that inspired that. And whatever it is that God wants you to do, don't let anything discourage you tonight. Franny Crosby was blind. She wrote some of the greatest hymns we sing in our hymn books. She wrote that one song that I, you know, draw me near, draw me near to thy precious bleeding side. Draw me near to the cross where thou hast died. She didn't let blindness stand in her way. We can't let the world dictate to us what we're going to do for God. I don't care if all the world turns against God. There's going to be a remnant. There's going to be people out there that are going to say yes to Jesus. Amen. Father, tonight I pray for everyone listening that the Holy Spirit would put in us a winning heart and a winning attitude. Lord, there's so much negativeness in our world and negativity and, and the internet and everywhere we look. But God, the Christians ought to be the rejoicing ones in the world. We ought to be the happiest group. We ought to be the most victorious group because we belong to you, Lord. And you said rejoice in you always. And again, I say rejoice. And I pray tonight, God, that we would be able to rejoice in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord every day. That God, even though everything would come against us, all of hell would come against us. We would rejoice. 
that our faith would rise to a level that we would be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I pray for students. I pray for young people. I pray for all of us, Lord, old, young, whatever, that the spirit of God would move in us tonight and show us, Lord, the attitude of a winner, a victorious servant. Lord, when we think of you being a winner, even though you were crushed by the cross, even though you were arrested and taken and beaten and, and, and within an inch of your life and then crucified on the cross, that looked like a losing scenario. But when we look at it, it was victory. The blood was shed. Now we're saved by that blood. We're healed by that blood. We're delivered by that blood because of salvation through Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that even though you were crushed for our iniquities, you rose again from the dead, triumphant, victorious over the grave. You rose over the grave and gave us deliverance tonight in victory. The paradox of all time. When the devil thought he had won, Death has no sting. He rose from the dead triumphant. He defeated every demon in hell for us. He gave us eternal life. Gave us the victory. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. We thank God for that victory. And everybody here that I know of, maybe, and I shouldn't say everybody, I don't know everybody's heart, per se, but if everybody here is saved, knows Jesus, then you've already got the winning one inside of you. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in us. Hallelujah. The greater one is in us. And if he's in us, guess what? We're guaranteed the victory. We just got to walk in that victory that we have and accept that victory but maybe tonight again and i'm going to close with this you're struggling tonight with something it's not something that you need to share with anybody else here but you know it in your heart and you're saying tonight lord i want the victory that you've given me and i'm going to take it tonight in jesus name and i'm going to walk in it if that's you tonight then i would ask you just to say with me tonight lord I receive the victory that you've given me through Jesus Christ. My Lord, you are my Savior, and you've given me life. You've given me victory tonight. And tonight I'm walking in all of the power that you've given me in Jesus Christ. And if that's you tonight, then just accept that victory. Walk in it. Live in it. And each and every day, God will reveal more and more to you of that victory. Amen and amen. Praise God. Um, tonight, before you go, we're going to be um, doing something. As we've trial, we have a trial moderator position that we've started a few people on tonight, and or this last few weeks. And we do that because we don't know everybody yet. And we're kind of like going through a process, getting to know people, and so some people are. We want to make you a regular moderator tonight, and I think I'm gonna um, let game game where are you are you here? Uh, have him say something about it, but he's going to be taking um, you guys to the next level in your um, in this process. You're going to be able to now become a regular moderator, which means you're going to have a few more privileges. You're going to be able to help us. When we get busier, it'll, it'll make more sense. But as more people come to the server, we need to be ready when trolls come in. And so this is basically troll control. <laughs> troll control. Yeah, I like that. So when there's trolls everywhere and we're trying to we're trying to control the trolls. We we need maybe more than one person, two people. Sometimes a person isn't here and another one can come in. The troll control patrol. Yeah, I like that. 
So the idea is that we have a tool called timeout and game warrior is the one that um, knows about that a little bit more than me, but basically it would, it would take away somebody's privilege of talking and texting. And then they would just be basically muted out. They could still be in the room and hear, but they can't do anything. So it's a good op- option besides banning them. And then, you know, it also gives us opportunity to work with people. And there's going to be a ton of things that we're going to need help with, like follow up. We got a lot of members now that we don't even know who they are. I haven't been able to do a whole lot of follow up yet. I'm trying to get that done. But, you know, so there might be some opportunities for people to do other things. And we're going to make that stuff known as we go along. So anyway, um, I guess we're just going to go ahead and there's a few people that are going to get that tonight, uh, the next level. And so once you see your name in the uh, announcements or whatever, I I guess that's how we're going to do it, right? (coughs) Let's see what's going on here. I'm in a different place. So anyway, you'll you'll be able to do some things to help us more, and that's what we need. We're kind of slowly building because we don't want to go too fast. And if we just start advertising like crazy, we're not going to be able to handle that right now, that kind of growth. And we're going to end up with a lot of trolls and it's going to get messy. So what we're trying to do is build within a time frame of maybe over the next few months. <clears throat> but we've got about, se- I think about seven people that are willing to help us right now. I mean, that's with me and game warrior and and we have um diligent who's also an admin there's other people too that are out that aren't here a lot but they're a part of my ministry some of them if they come on they've been with me a long time they're probably going to get into a position but i'm not sure exactly what else is going to happen but if you're not an an admin or um i mean a, a moderator yet don't don't feel bad it's not something that we're we're saying you know we don't we don't want you to be it's just that we can only do so many people at a time and maybe down the road we'll we'll, of course we'll add more people but right now we just want to start growing wow chinese well that's something to, to, that's a good thing to have because, you know, we do get people from China on here and it's good to have somebody that we could use, you know, for, as a translator, if you'd want to. He speaks Hebrew too. Wow. That's awesome. Well, it's always good to have people that have languages <laughs> beyond ours, English here. All right, I'm just learning this Discord, so you guys got to remember that. I'm not, you know, as skilled as some of you are in Discord. Discord is a whole different animal. And what we're trying to do is get this thing going for God. We want to be up and running. And we're going to do some big events during the holidays and things. And we want to have a good group of people. Japanese, Italian, and German. Well, all you guys that have languages that are beyond English, always remember if we have somebody come in and they speak, you know, maybe not good English and you can help them, man, that's an incredible tool for the gospel and for sharing the the word. So just remember that German and all of that. It's awesome. So let's all just, you know, take joy in in that we are, you know, that God loves us and that he called us to follow him. And, 
you know, it's as simple as that, really. I mean, we can make it harder than that, but we don't need to. What, what God, what Jesus called Peter to do, he didn't call John to do. What he called John to do, he didn't call Matthew to do. Each person was unique to Jesus. That's the thing that's amazing. And what he called them to do was unique in, in their gifts and their talents and what he gave them. But another thing to remember is God will never call us to do what he doesn't equip us to do. Amen. He'll never call us to do what he doesn't first equip us. And sometimes we don't even know what we have and all the resources that we have. And we start finding out things, you know. But for a small group that's on the way up, we've got a lot of rejoicing to do. We're starting to see some things happen here. And I like it. And I'm happy about it. But it's nowhere near what God wants to do. So just, we just need to remember that and just keep going, keep building. And But each person here is important. And, and if you got stuff that you need prayer for, just remember our prayer request page. Let's keep lifting up people in here. There's a lot of people that have expressed their, you know, needs. And so we got to keep praying for that. And also um, next week, I'm going to start doing some live events outside of our thursday so maybe i don't know a tuesday night maybe i don't know yet but it, it we might call them pop-up events so they might be something spontaneous we may do some does this have a poll feature where you can do like poll questions and things like that i believe it does right What I was thinking we could do, and this is something that is, is totally off the cuff, but we could ask a question, like maybe a Bible question, and then send it out, and whoever gets the first answer right gets a prize or something. I've done that in the past, like a trivia thing. And we send it out social media, too, so it brings people to the server, maybe that have never come on yet. I have a bunch of people on Facebook that aren't here, so... Yeah, we might do trivia things like that where you'll get the thing and there's push notification. And whoever gets on first and answers the question right gets a prize. Now, that's just something that we do for fun. Okay, well, we'll have to look into it. But these are some of the events that we're going to be doing. And then, of course, for Christmas, we're going to do, we're going to do, uh, <laughs> used to call it, kamikaze karaoke where we find different servers and join them and then start singing <laughs> and like you know like doing uh, christmas carols like a raid yeah <laughs> but, but not nothing bad we're just singing and just see what happens you know i don't know these are just ideas that we've done in the past but yeah, so keep keep us uh, keep us uh, in prayer, especially as we you know engage people more. Um, the sky's the limit is what we can do here. And so anyway, all right. Anybody um, anybody got anything else you want to say, add or anything before we go?